Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Glam Metal Gems, episode number three, where I take a deeper look into the genre, it bands and albums that slip through the crack, shining a new light on these lost gems, hopefully bringing them to a wider audience. But before we go any further, if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, by subscribing, as an added bonus, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with Glam Metal Gems episode number three. So this one here is a special Rock Candy Records edition. All the albums that we're gonna talk about here today have been lovingly reissued by the record label, which means you can head on over to the label's website and pick these up if you enjoy what you hear about these bands today. So you don't have to go to eBay or your local record store, or any of that sort of stuff, and try to hunt down used copies you're gonna be able to pick these up right away. All right, so first up, we've got Damals. The album came out in 1988, actually came out on the optimal date of 8888. Um, they were a band that formed in Chicago, but were based out in LA. And the reason I mentioned that they formed in Chicago is that they've got that sort of sound that comes from Cheap Trick, Enough's Enough, but they definitely mix it up with uh, Poison. And the sound itself, though, is a bit more raw and rough like Jet Boy. Definitely got a punk attitude to the glam metal style. Um, unfortunately, though, when this release came out, it failed to make an impact. But supposedly, they had quite a big buzz going on in the UK. And unfortunately, did not find out until years later when it was too late to actually act upon it. Uh, remember, there was uh, no real access to internet and things of that nature at that time. So you didn't really know what was going on in these other countries and stuff unless you were visiting them. Uh, they did record a second album for Atlantic Records, uh, the record label. It was called Warped in 1990, but it was uh, the story was much of the same and the band was eventually dropped. And they recorded one third final album that came out in 1997 called Beyond the Valley of the Malls. Definitely using that D in the title there. Rock Candy Records reissued this album here in uh, 2018, keeping an eight in the date, so a nice throwback to the original release date there. Okay, next up we've got uh, Sea Hags, which came out in 1989. Debut studio album from these guys, produced by Mike Klink, who had worked with Guns N' Roses. And uh, interestingly, their first demos were actually done by Kirk Hammett, guitarist for Metallica. So interesting the number of famous people that they've worked with. Formed in San Francisco, California, their sound is full on dirty, sleazy, hard rock. Imagine a mix between Guns N' Roses and Rat. Uh, prior to the release of the debut album, though, they even had a song appear on the movie soundtrack, A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master, which came out in 1988, called Under the Night Stars. Uh, that song is on this album here, so you can check that one out too. Perfect example of a band that should have been much bigger than they were, they should have been huge, but it was the 80s rock and roll lifestyle and the drugs and debauchery that unfortunately won out, and uh, the band didn't last too long and broke up in 1990 with the band members going on to other projects and things. You had Adam Maples, the drummer, who would actually join Guns N' Roses briefly before Matt Sorum took over on drums. Then Frankie Wilsey, the guitarist, joined Arcade, along with uh, former rat vocalist Stephen Piercy and former Cinderella drummer Fred Corey in a nice super group there. And then uh, Rod Yukum on vocals, he joined a goth rock project called Power of Three and Chris Sloshhart, uh, the bassist. Unfortunately, the rock and roll lifestyle caught up with him and he died in 1991. And then uh, Rock Candy Records, they reissued this album here in 2007. Okay, continuing on, we've got Heaven's Edge from 1989, debut studio album from these guys, produced by Neil Kernon, who'd worked with Dokken and Queensryche, definitely giving these guys a really good sound. They come from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they've got a real straight ahead rock and roll sound like a fellow Philly band Tangier, if you know who they are. If you don't, check them out. They are a really good band as well. Uh, this album here is full of big anthems, uh, amazing guitar work by guitarist Reggie Wu. He's got a very similar flair like George Lynch from uh, Dokken and of course Lynch Mob fame and vocals by Mark Evans uh, handled in fine form. 
But unfortunately, like so many bands of the era, they got caught up in record label politics and the changing musical styles at the time. Eventually, though, the band did call it a day. In 1999, though, they released a collection of demos called Some Other Place, Some Other Time. While they're a bit more raw and rough than obviously this uh, well-produced debut album, they are worth checking out. They're really uh, well-written songs at least. And uh, Rock Candy Records reissued this album here in uh, 2010. But in 2013, the band did reunite with all original members. They began playing shows. Unfortunately, the band's original bassist passed away in 2019 um, from cancer. The band has yet to announce his replacement. Okay, next up we've got Melidian Lost in the Wind, a debut studio album by these guys. Uh, the album itself uh, has various producers on it, including band members and whatnot. They're from New York City and uh, definitely one of the more melodic rock bands of the era. The sound has uh, big keyboards, some razor sharp guitar riffs in it, and some fierce fiery lead work from Jason Lane on here. Um, the thing that really puts this over the top, in my opinion, though, is the swagger of vocalist Chris Cade. Um, how this band never made it big, I'll never know. Uh, vocals alone on this thing are definitely worth checking out. Um, their sound is like Danger Danger, but with a rougher, sleazier uh, set of vocals on it. Regarding the album, though, the band says that they never got a lot of support from the label, and eventually the band imploded. Uh, the biggest person to uh, sort of move on after this was keyboardist Eddie Wall, who would form a new group called Red Belly, and uh, their sound, though, was much more firmly set within the grunge sound of the era. They released a self-titled album in 1995. Since then, he moved into production work, and he's worked with bands like El Nino, Primer 55, Cradle of Filth, and even Anthrax, and Rock Candy Records has reissued this in 2010. All right, and the final album to talk about here, Salty Dog, Every Dog Has Its Day from 1990. Excellent debut studio album by these guys, produced by Peter Collins, who's worked with Rush and Queensryche. The band itself formed in LA, and their sound is firmly rooted in blues-based rock like Aerosmith, but it's infused with a dirty swagger like Guns N' Roses. Guitarist Pete Reven really rips it up on the guitar here. And then you got Jimmy Bleacher, the vocalist, perfectly defining you know, that, that glam metal style sound. Upon the album's release, it was universally praised. Uh, lead single, Come Along, was all over the radio, but unfortunately still uh, failed to materialize into uh, album sales. In 1991, lead vocalist Jimmy Bleacher was replaced by Daryl Beach, and the band did record 11 demo tracks with him, but uh, unfortunately an album did not materialize at the time. Although in 2018, the demos finally appeared as this album here, Lost Treasure, definitely worth checking out. It's like having an entire new album by uh, Salty Dog, even though it's a different vocalist, but uh, new vocalist on here, Daryl Beach, does a fine job. Uh, guitarist Pete Reven would later turn up with uh, Jizzy Pearl of Love Hate on his solo projects. And then bassist Michael Hannon, he's probably the one who's uh, stayed most active with his band American Dog. They have released nine studio albums since forming 20 years ago, so very active. The sound of his band is a mix of Salty Dog with uh, ACDC, definitely leaning more towards the rough raw rock of uh, ACDC. Definitely worth checking out in my opinion. And um, Rock Candy Records reissued this one in 2016. And so there you go. You got five glam metal gems to go out and explore. And remember, you can head on over to uh, the record label Rock Candy Records uh, website to order these. They are all still in print. Uh, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Check the description below for related videos like past episodes of Glam Metal Gems. Uh, leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts. And I hope everyone has a great day. I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, guys.